Hey guys, welcome to Games and Gardens. Today it is gardens, but I am on borrowed time today. It is hot and humid already. It's going to be a high of 90 or 91, and I also think it's going to rain. I think there's showers on and off today, so I am taking the opportunity because it's going to be actually hotter in the next few days than it is going to be today. And I've got things to do. I've got green beans to put in the ground. I have some vine borer hunting that we're going to be doing. And we might, if we have time, do something with the uh, strawberry runners. So come on, let's do this. I said in an earlier video I was going to direct sow these beans, but it actually didn't rain the day that I planned to do that. We actually didn't have rain for, I want to say, around 14, 15 days, and it was hot. And germination does not bode well when you have such hot, dry conditions. So I put these guys on my kitchen table, and these are egg cartons. I just put dirt in there, put the beans in there, and just let them grow. And then they've been sitting out here probably for the better half of a week, but they are starting to get spindly. You see that right there? That one's trying to climb. Some of them already have tried to climb. I'm not saying any names there. But these guys have to get in the ground. So we need to work, and we need to work fast. So the rain stopped. I thought it wasn't. I was really going to just change my plans and stay indoors and do some indoor stuff. But the rain started slowing down as soon as I thought of that. And I got all my beans over here in the garden now because they were out front. Now I'm out back. And can I just say, these are my favorite things to put in the garden because there's really so little maintenance to them. If you have a trellis, then you just put them right underneath your trellis and they'll pretty much climb up there already as long as there's nothing else for them to nothing else to tempt them to climb up. I did have that problem this year with tomatoes that were a little too close to the trellis, but it's okay, you just retrain them. But watch this, guys. This is just so awesome. So master gardeners are totally going to yell at me because these guys are so root-bound, but look how easy. I just pick it up, I'm going to put it in the ground, and then I'm going to line them all up like that and I'm going to bury them in the ground, and that'll be that. It's so simple, so easy. These guys are nitrogen fixers. They're so good for the garden. And they're going to grow me some yummy food. But I really like that I could just pull them up. I don't have to worry about the roots, really. And yeah, I know, that's not good. You actually don't want this. You don't want them to be root-bound like that. But I did not have any other nice day to do this. So I'm taking the advantage now. They will recover. They're actually looking very healthy right now as we speak, so I'm not too concerned. All right, so I'm thoroughly soaked. I look like a spotted hyena. So I thought the rain was gonna just slow down. I was wrong. It started raining harder. <laughs> but I got all the beans in, so that's great. So the vine borers are gonna have to wait till either later today when it stops raining or Hopefully not another day. Um, but instead, we're going to pick some pods. <laughs> That's right. Although today it is not kale. Today it is Brussels sprouts. So yay, more episodes of The Office for me. Hopefully when the rain stops, we could go back outside and I could show you guys what to do with these vine borers and what we could do with some strawberry runners. Okay, it stopped raining a little bit. I don't know if it's going to start again, but I at least want to show you how I extract vine borers out of my squash vines. First, let's talk about squash vine borers. They will decimate your squash plants. I actually had a really rough year last year with them, but it wasn't until the end of the year that I really learned and mastered how to get rid of them, how to identify the problem, how to recognize where they are and use the correct tools. Some people will completely just get rid of the plant. And I am going to have to do that with think with one of them because it's just too far gone. But for the most part, your plant can recover. You're kind of going to have to perform some surgery though. So I have some tools here. I have, oh, the sun's coming out. That's a good sign. All right, so I have some tools here that will help me with these vine borers. Exacto knife, box cutter, my handy Fiskars. And this one's a new tool that I'm going to use this year. Paper clips. Let's look at our plants in question. So this was a pumpkin vine, and you could see it's dying. And that's because the inside there is definitely a vine borer. 
Vine borers are not something you could treat topically. You must get inside the plant because it's going to eat your plant from the inside out. So I'm actually going to use my Fiskars and we're going to cut this guy open and say sayonara to him. So inside, you see it eating right now actually. That right there is a vine borer. You do not want those. They are bad. Bad, bad, bad. So this guy I am going to try and save, but as you can see the damage it's done as it's eating through the inside of it. You kind of have to guess where it is based on this information. So I'm not going to cut down here because it already went that way. So I'm probably going to cut right around here where the growth hasn't died off yet and see if I can find him. This time I'm going to use my X-Acto knife. Right, so I got the vine borer out of that one. But you know what I noticed as I'm doing this? I really like my X-Acto blade. I don't know if I could use anything else besides this. I highly recommend getting an X-Acto knife just for this because you do the smallest incision. You can get it out and then put mud over top of it for the wound to heal and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to try and show you on a bigger squash plant. So here's another squash vine. This one's a little bit bigger. And here's the telltale frass. Like that totally tells me that there is a vine borer in there. So I'm going to actually start from here. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to start from here and work my way up. Tiny incision all the way up. But first I'm going to cut that with my Fiskars. The mosquitoes are really bothering me now that it rained. Oh, actually I might... Oh. There's a little hole there you can see. Huh. Now I'm wondering if I could actually just fish it out using the uh, paper clip method. I really didn't think I was going to do it, but it might just be right there. All right, let's see what I can do. So with the paper clip method, you get a paper clip and you kind of make like a hook. Now this is a very poor representation of what I think I should be doing, but um, Desperate times calls for desperate measures. So we're going to go in here and we're going to try and fish it out and see if that works. Um, I'd be very impressed. And it just goes, if this does work, it will just go to show that this really is a two-pronged approach. There really is multiple ways of going about this. I think I see him. I'm not quite sure. I don't think this is really working. All right, there it is. Another one bites the dust. It's very important you put mud or something on top of this to heal that wound because um, you don't want anything else getting in there. But it is also crucially important to get that vine borer out because you are going to have such a tough time for years to come with squash plants if you don't. All right, it's later in the day, but it's still the same day nonetheless. Um, got a lot done in the house. Made some homemade pasta. I got some Brussels sprout seeds all ready to go for later in the fall, and um, now's a good time. Since the sun's going down, it doesn't feel so humid anymore. Now's a good time to show you guys how I'm going to save my strawberry runners. So here is the strawberry patch, and it's actually looking okay. I mean, you might look at this and think, wow, everything's dead and dying, but what's going on is the, it's, the plant has worked so hard putting fruit out that now it's resting and it's going to do just fine once I get some wood chips in here in the fall. Um, but I've got a lot of runners. So this is where they should stop. And obviously they didn't get the memo. So a runner is when the plant starts to shoot out what I like to call daughters. This is a daughter. And what you could do is you could save the daughter and you can root it. There might even be a node. See, that's the beginning of a node. And that will start to root wherever it grows. So I actually have one already rooted. Yep, one already rooted right here. Rut row. Yeah. So to avoid that from happening, I'm going to show you what you can do. I'm going to be using some pots filled with soil. You can use whatever it is you want to use. So here's my pot filled with soil. And... I didn't think I was going to need it today, but I'm going to need something to hold these down, and I don't have any stakes. So I created my own using paper clips. Very useful. So you simply just take the, the daughter plant, you kind of put it in the dirt a little bit there, use your little paper clip or your stake, whatever it is, and just push that down so that it stays there. And you leave it there for like six weeks. You really don't need to do anything. It'll do its job for you. And in about six weeks time, you can cut this 
off and you have a brand new strawberry plant to give away to friends and family. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you on the flip side. Peace out.